Today, we're gonna to be talking about a little bit of my most recent vintage finds. And it seems like Nutella wants to say hello too. There you go. Do you have any vintage sweaters to share? You just kind of keep this one classic look on, yeah? So to be 100% honest, I actually don't know or remember if I ever shared the history of this particular vintage sweater that I'm wearing with you all. So we'll start with this one. But I have this whole pile of sweaters to go through with you and I have a few other fun tools that I wanted to share with you all. So let's begin with this sweater. This is a cardigan. I got it online on Etsy, I believe, and it was marketed as a 50s slash 60s sweater. I have had so many people ask me if there is a pattern for this one, and I don't have a pattern for you all, but if you keep your eyes peeled and you stick around, it is in my list of plans in the future to write up and create a pattern in a wide range of sizes for this particular cardigan. So that is in my future project plans. You know, I decided to do this one first. I had a thought of doing a Victorian sweater first, but for multiple reasons, I think I'm gonna do this particular sweater first. I absolutely love it. I do wear this all the time. And when my mom visits me, she also borrows it quite a bit. It is just such a comfy kind of classic sweater. The next sweater I wanted to share with you all is this really, really cute seahorse sweater. Now I'm not gonna put this one on because it is not my size, so it won't fit me but I did buy it for my mom because she loves seahorses. I actually found this at a local Goodwill. It's so cute. I could tell right away that it was hand knit and that is not a bad thing. I feel like in the past when someone says like, oh, I could tell that that was hand knit, it kind of feels like, oh, it was homemade, so it's not as good. What I mean by that is like, I could see the craftsmanship in this. There are so many cute little details on this sweater that I love very much. It's so interesting to me that they also work the sleeve in two separate colors. And when I look at this in more detail, let me see if I can tell how they knit this. Uh, yeah, this looks like in tarsia knitting to me. So they would have consistently had two balls of yarn going on every row and wrapped it around as they were knitting this set of sleeves. The arms are uh, set in, so they're sewn into place. The shoulder seams are sewn up, but it looks like they picked up stitches and knit the ribbed collar that way. Do we have side seams? Yes, we do have side seams. So this is one of the reasons why this makes me think it's, I don't know exactly from when, I can't tell based on the shape at the moment, um, but it is, I would be guessing, earlier than the 70s or 80s because it is knit flat and seamed up. The next find is my next most recent find. Um, I wore it at the beginning of one of my other videos semi-recently. It is another one that I found at the same Goodwill. So I always, I go like weekly to this Goodwill and I tend to find a new vintage sweater every time. This is like very much in that same category of like fuzzy mohair 1960s style knits. I find a lot that the 1960s style knits tend to have that like fuzzy yarn, the fuzzy mohair yarn. And this has beautiful cables worked all up the front and back. This one I think works really well. Like I really like to wear dark red lipsticks and I feel that this one for me just suits that really, really well. I'm very happy with it. There's also a, a cable that runs down the side of both sleeves. What more can I tell you about this? So this is also worked flat in pieces and then seamed up the sides. The neckline is interesting. It looks like it was ribbed for a bit of an extra, like an, an inch on the shoulders and two inches in the middle, or that's just the way that they folded it over. And then they did fold it to the inside. None of this part is sewn down. It is just that the sides here are sewn down. So there's there's no sewing down in the middle. It's just tacked into place at the sides here. And that does give that really flattering, I think, neckline when I wear it. I also really like the sleeve length. I'm the kind of person who, I don't like long sleeves. I prefer three quarter sleeves. I'm either kind of like a, I don't like cap sleeves. I don't like short sleeves necessarily. I like somewhere between right up at the top of my bicep down to three quarter length. That's my preferred sleeve length. So yeah, this, finding this sweater in the thrift store for like six bucks, amazing. I was so happy. I Like I knew I had to take it home. I'm one of those people who, if I see something in a thrift store that is made by hand, I also want to rescue it because 
I know how much work likely went into that and I don't want it to go unappreciated. And again, this is another one where it was handmade and you can see a few of those little hiccups, <laughs> those little skipped uh, stitches when they're doing a cable and they forgot to put one in or like there's a few squashed cables where maybe they didn't knit the right number of rows between the cables as they were before, but it doesn't take away from the sweater. I think it still looks absolutely gorgeous and it makes me smile to know that that is a part of the piece. The next one that we have is, like I said again, very, very similar to the other 1960s, like 50s, 60s-ish ones that have, it's potentially the 50s too, that have a lot of this mohair style yarn. I wore this one as well. I don't have a pattern for this. So all of these are candidates for me in the future at some point to write up patterns for so that everyone can knit them as well. Another favorite cardigan of mine to wear, it has this really big collar with cables on the bottom, kind of like a cable border, the same, this time chunkier cables down the sleeves. And we got some nice chunky cables down the front. It's also knit flat and seamed up. And this time the collar isn't like picked up. The collar is actually worked like left to right or right to left. So it's not worked from the collar down, it's worked from one side to the other and then sewn on. Some other interesting construction details, we have the person, they whip stitched on a silk ribbon as kind of the button band. And then it looks like they use the buttonhole uh, setting on their sewing machine to sew on buttonholes. I love the buttons that they chose. It's very like Tyrolean jumper-esque buttons to me. At least that's what it says to me. When I was younger, I had Tyrolean jumper that had buttons very much like this. And I personally really love it. And then this person also has, I see advertisements for this in some knitting magazines from the 1950s and 60s to get your custom made um, like tag that you can sew into your sweaters that you make that have your name on them. So this one, it says, specially handmade and fashioned by Lillian Runyon. And I got this one on eBay. And I do believe, like I tried looking up Lillian Runyon in that area. I couldn't find out much about her, but thank you so much, Lillian. I love this sweater and I wear it often. The next one is in a color that, um, isn't what I expected. I bought this online and the color looked a little bit more like pumpkin muted versus this is freaking, this is neon. <laughs> like it's in your face. I don't know necessarily that it's the best color for me personally, but that doesn't stop me from wearing this cardigan either. This is another one that I, I get cold often. So it is, <laughs> it's nice for me to have a bunch of these cardigans just to throw on. This has a very interesting uh, construction in my opinion. So this is once again, knit flat and seamed. It's almost as if it was knit in the round at the arms with raglan shaping and then it was knit. No, I'm trying to see how was this done? Yeah, it has super interesting construction. So I can definitely see a seam. Uh, that sews the collar on here from right to left. I see a seam at the underarm and all the way at the under sleeve, but it almost seems like the top portion of the sleeve at the raglan decreases was knit together. I don't really know how that could be done. So this is one that I kind of want to study more closely. I just thought it was an interesting construction, so I wanted to look at that as well as an interesting collar. Look at that, it comes to a little point in the back. So I thought that was really cute. It has very similar ideas. See, there are ones that I have, very similar yarn. The first two were cables, and this one is still a cardigan, but kind of with that similar look of construction, but it has some bits that are interesting and make it different. And these buttons are also like self yarn buttons. So it feels like there's a ring inside here. And the person who made it just wrapped the yarn around this to create buttons out of the same yarn. And the button band does look like it is made from crochet. So it was crocheted all the way around. Same with the buttonholes. And this is similar to how I've done many of my own button bands for when I knit uh, vintage pieces. This last new, maybe, I've worn it a lot and I've gotten a lot of comments on it. So it's 
maybe not new to many of you, but I don't think I've explicitly talked about it either, is this sweater. Again, from the exact same vintage store. Not vintage store, actually. It's the same Goodwill that I get a lot of my other vintage sweaters from now. This reads a little bit more 1980s to me, but it has a lot of the design elements in it that I really love. It's got these like gathered puffed sleeves with tighter uh, around the wrist. We have cables along the front, a higher neckline with buttons that button up. So yeah, it's got a lot of those elements that I, I really enjoy. And the tag says, custom made by Thelma Dever. Dever? Dever? D-E-V-E-R. You'll see it in the close-up. This is another one that is knit flat and seamed up. And it is moss stitch almost all over, except for in the yoke area where we get a little bit of that ribbing. It does look like the collar is picked up stitches and then knit all the way around. So yeah, I really like this one. For writing my first sweater pattern, I was between writing up this one and writing up this one. But I chose this one instead because this to me reads more true vintage versus this reads like 1980s taking style elements from the 40s and the 1890s and kind of cottage quarry and putting it together. This one felt more true vintage and I actually found a few, like I have two knitting patterns from the 50s that are very, very, very similar to this particular sweater. So that's kind of why I wanted to make this pattern first to create it in a wide range of sizes. And then, like I said, any of the other sweaters that you've seen are all candidates for in the future, once I feel comfortable writing patterns, making those into knitting patterns that you can knit up as well. Those are all of the new vintage pieces that I've gotten over the last few months. <laughs> I'm very happy with them. I think I need to find a better storage solution for the sweaters. I now own a lot of vintage knit sweaters that I like to wear and I've knit quite a few of my own so I feel like I need to come up with a better storage solution. I currently have like toppling piles of sweater in my closet but this isn't the last of the things that I wanted to share with you. I have a few other things so hold on let me grab them. Some vintage tools I've picked up that I really think are interesting and unique are the Crazy Daisy Winder for finer hand weaving. Claude has one of these and she's actively working on a blouse you are able to make these little crochet daisy flowers out of them and you can combine them in different ways to make a blouse or a cardigan or place masks. Place mats. <laughs> I want to try this out so that's why um, I found it. I mean it's it can be really inexpensive online so when I saw a pretty inexpensive one I went ahead and I snapped it up. The next one is a raglan sweater wheel. <laughs> If you don't know what this is, Roxanne Richardson goes into a lot of detail on this particular knitting wheel. But in general, what you can do is you can create a raglan sweater with different styles, sleeves and collars and necklines for any size from baby, six months to children's, boys, teen, juniors, um, we go to Mrs. Women's and Men's. And you can make, let's see, what are we doing? So we have different ones, raglan front, we have the raglan sleeve, raglan back, and similar ones on this side. And you can either do a V-neck or a scoop neck. And basically you say what, you kind of can rotate this inner wheel and that allows you to pick what size you want to knit. And then you have all of your instructions for that particular row count or stitch count show up for you here. So you can, uh, yeah, <laughs> it gives you a gauge. It gives you, you can even choose different um, yarns. So depending on what weight yarn you have, they have different instructions for that. So you can say, you know, you do it in eight stitches, an inch, six stitches, an inch, or five stitches, an inch. So do you want to have a little bit more bulky raglan sweater or do you want a little finer gauge raglan sweater? So I thought that was really cool. It's like a fully adjustable knitting pattern for raglan sweaters for multiple yarn types and multiple ages and sizes. The next thing that we have is this. I don't know if you have ever seen it, but I was able to get this for $28 on eBay. And it is from the 1970s. 
and it is a circular knitting needle kit. You might see one missing. I managed to get one that was in fully, like, not working order. It's all in working order, but what, what's the name for that? Nothing's missing. That's the word I'm searching for. It means nothing's missing. Uh, <laughs> there are some currently in use, which is why they're gone from here, but we have knitting needle sizes from two all the way to 15. I have different sized uh, circular loop-de-loops wires, as well as connecting pieces for the thicker or thinner wires to make them longer, stoppers, and yeah, basically everything I could ever want in a circular knitting needle kit. The only thing I will mention, I am using it right now and it does work well. It's just, this one I don't think has ever been removed from its case. So the, the wires between the needles are very stiff. They're very, very stiff. Like they don't want to change their shape. I'm thinking about maybe soaking them in some warm water just to get them a little bit more pliable. I don't know 100% what they're made of, but I feel like that might loosen it up a bit and make it a little bit easier for me to work with them. But overall, I'm really happy. I mean, I got an entire circular knitting needle kit for 28 bucks, which is an absolute steal. <laughs> circular knitting needle kits can be, like the interchangeable needles can be so, so expensive. So I'm really happy about that. And plus I got like, what feels like to me, a super trendy uh, <laughs> cover pattern as well. So I hope you enjoyed this look into my most recent vintage finds. Again, stay tuned. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see how I work on creating a pattern for this. That'll be coming up in the next few months and you can also follow me so that you can see you know when i release the pattern i'll need some pattern testers once i'm working to it on that stage so stay tuned for that let me know if any of the other sweaters you would be particularly interested in me developing a knitting pattern for in the future as well i always love taking a peek at uh, vintage knits and knitting tools. If you see anything online that you think is unusual or interesting, feel free to tell me about it below and link it to me. I love reading through your comments and learning more about that. Actually, I'm leaving on a trip soon for a Victorian ball, which you will also hear about more in the next and upcoming videos pretty soon. And one of the comments on a previous video of mine told me about a place which I've decided to add onto my itinerary to visit and learn more about the history of knitting and knitting machines. So let me know. I truly look into your comments and I love researching them more. So thank you again. And I can't wait to see what you all think. I guess that's it for this time and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>